Primordial soup, or prebiotic soup, is a hypothetical condition of the Earth's atmosphere before the emergence of life. It is a chemical environment in which the first biological molecules organic compounds were formed under natural forces. According to the theory, simple organic compounds were created from non-living inorganic molecules abiogenesis through physical and chemical reactions on the Earth's surface. The so formed organic molecules accumulate into a rich organic ocean, or a soup. In this soup, simple organic molecules reacted with each other polymerize to form more complex molecules, including nucleic acids and proteins, which are the central structural and functional components of all organisms. These molecules then aggregate to become the first forms of life. A British naturalist Charles Darwin had vaguely imagined the primordial soup as a warm little pond in 1871. A coherent scientific argument was introduced by a Soviet biochemist Alexander Oparin in 1924. According to Oparin, in the primitive Earth's surface, carbon, hydrogen, water vapor, and ammonia reacted to form the first organic compounds. Unbeknown to Oparin, whose writing was circulated only in Russian, and English scientists John Burton Sanderson held and independently arrived at similar conclusion in 1929. It was Halden who gave the name soup to the theory. The theory is variously known as primordial soup theory, prebiotic soup theory, and operin Halden hypothesis. Biochemist Robert Shapiro has summarized the theory in its mature form as follows. 1. Early Earth had a chemically reducing atmosphere. 2. This atmosphere, exposed to energy in various forms, produced simple organic compounds monomers. 3. These compounds accumulated in a soup, which may have been concentrated at various locations shorelines, oceanic vents etc. 4. Alexander Oparin first postulated his theory in Russian in 1924 in a small pamphlet titled Proiskos Deni Zizny, The Origin of Life. According to Oparin, the primitive Earth's surface had a thick red-hot liquid, composed of heavy elements such as carbon in the form of iron carbide. This nucleus was surrounded by lightest elements, that is gases, such as hydrogen. In the presence of water vapor, carbides reacted with hydrogen to form hydrocarbons. Such hydrocarbons were the first organic molecules. These further combined with oxygen and ammonia to produce hydroxy and amino derivatives, such as carbohydrates and proteins. These molecules accumulated on the ocean surface, becoming gel-like substances and growing in size. They gave rise to primitive organisms cells. In his original theory, Oparin considered oxygen as one of the primordial gases. Thus the primordial atmosphere was an oxidizing one. However, when he elaborated his theory in 1936 in a book by the same title, and translated into English in 1938, he modified the chemical composition of primordial environment as strictly reducing, consisting of methane, ammonia, free hydrogen and water vapor, excluding oxygen. J.B.S. Heldon independently postulated his primordial soup theory in 1929 in an eight-page article The Origin of Life in the Rationalist Annual. According to Heldon the primitive Earth's atmosphere was essentially reducing, with little or no oxygen. Ultraviolet ray from the sun-induced reaction on a mixture of water, carbon dioxide, and ammonia. Organic substances such as sugars and protein components amino acids were synthesized. These molecules accumulated till the primitive oceans reached the consistency of hot dilute soup. The first reproducing things were created from this soup. As to the priority over the theory, Haldon accepted that operant came first, saying, I have very little doubt that Professor Oprin has the priority over me. By further transformation, more complex organic polymers, and ultimately life, developed in the soup. One of the most important pieces of experimental support for the soup theory came in 1953. A graduate student, Stanley Miller, and his professor, Harold Urey, performed an experiment that demonstrated how organic molecules could have spontaneously formed from inorganic precursors, 
under conditions like those posited by the Operan Heldon hypothesis. The now famous Miller Urey experiment used a highly reduced mixture of gases, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen to form basic organic monomers, such as amino acids. This provided direct experimental support for the second point of the soup theory, and it is around the remaining two points of the theory that much of the debate now center. Apart from the Miller-Urey experiment, the next most important step in research on prebiotic organic synthesis was the demonstration by Joe Noro that the nucleic acid purine base, adenine, was formed by heating aqueous ammonium cyanide solutions. In support of abiogenesis in eutectic ice, more recent work demonstrated the formation of S-triacines alternative nucleobases, pyrimidines including cytosine and uracil, and adenine from urea solutions subjected to freeze-thaw cycles under a reductive atmosphere with spark discharges as an energy source.